things on mine You make everything so fine Worry about those comments I'm way too numb, yeah It's way too dumb, yeah I get those goosebumps every time I need the hype Throw that to the side, yeah I get those goosebumps every time, yeah When you're not around me Throw that to the side, yeah I get those goosebumps every time, yeah 713 To the 21, yeah, I'm riding Why they on me? <laughs> Sorry, I, I, you know what? You guys know what I'm laughing. I'm laughing at John's moves. John has got the moves in there. <laughs> it's a great move. He's busting the move there. I love it. Love it, John. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that was brilliant. Literally, just as it cut live, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> an absolute splutter. Um, but we're here. Welcome to Lady Mag NFC. We're back for another talking tune, uh, another week, another round of talking points. Of Newcastle United and Lord and Mag and UFC do it like no other. We make sure that we have the people on to discuss all things Newcastle United. But first of all, Daz, Chris, how are you on this fine Wednesday evening? Well, I'm all the better now after seeing John's moves. Um, yeah, no, all, all good at me, Pete. All good at me. Uh, normal working day. Middle of the week. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to talking a bit of Newcastle and uh, with the lads here. We're going to talk about a, a certain match as well, I'm sure, as part of our discussion. Sure we are. Uh, Chris, how you doing, fella? How's things? Oh, good, mate, yeah. Um, really busy in work at the moment on a personal level, but um, I'm, I'm all good, mate, yeah. really Been really looking forward to having the lads on tonight. Um, should be a really good show. i tell you what, I was laughing, not just at John's dancing, but also, um, <laughs> you know, the intro and it, when we're all celebrating... All I can ever hear, it even drowns out the music, is me going, hey! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every time I hear it, if I'm like looking away and the music's on, I'm always like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm but I'm, I'm good, boys. How are you, Pete? You all right, mate? Uh, I'm the same, mate. Um, this week's been an absolute mm-hmm. nightmare at work. Uh, non-stop, non-stop. Uh, this is kind of like a, <laughs> feels like a bit of a break yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'll probably be straight back on it again after we finish the show. Uh, busy week. I knew it was gonna. I knew it was coming. I'm halfway through. Let's just get through it, and uh, hopefully the week after and beyond will be even better. But you know what's even better? The fact that so many are in the chat right now. Welcome to you all. Thank you for rocking with us and being with us. Um, Tune Tactics TV's in the house. I like some Alan Thompson's in the house. Um, you got David Cook. You got Les Stapleton. You got. Jordy Toon for Life. There's just the ones I can see. Uh, Lorraine Turner's in the house as well. I uh, will thank you all for coming and joining us. And just do the normal housekeeping as we always do. Just click those likes. Thanks for watching and thank you for your support as always. But uh, yeah, I think it's time to talk some uh, tune. Uh, and we need to get these boys in. Um, so let, let's, let's get them in, Daz. Let's get them in the house. Okay, give me the order. Oh, well, actually, actually, first of all, the target. Yes. The target. We didn't do it last time until late on. Let's do that first, and then we'll get the boys in. What are you going let's, for? Go for, let's go for 200. 200 likes. Go on. You can do it. This, there's already 86 in the chat. So uh, if everyone clicked it, we'll be half, nearly halfway there to our, our target of 200 likes. But uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's bring, bring the lads in. Uh, where are we going first? We, 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 do we need the spinny wheel? No, no we don't need the. No, spinny we don't need the spinny wheel. <laughs> <laughs> let's bring the let's let's bring the guys on first that have, that have been here and, and done that. Let's get um Jordy Dread. He's back in business. Back back joining us tonight. Let's get him in. Specs, welcome back, Specs. Yes, yes. Big up to everyone on the panel. Everyone coming in. Everyone in the chats hitting the likes. 
I appreciate being there. I'm your London embracing Geordie, because obviously you can tell I'm from North London, Tottenham. Long story, but I appreciate guys, and I'm I'm all right, man. We got a win the other day, so I'm all right on the right track. Got some few plays back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So long may continue. Bit of consistency, mate. Bit of consistency. Yes, a little bit, exactly. Little bit. Um, and get uh, should we get the rival in? Should we? Should we? Should we the enemy, the enemy, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's it's all friendly here. Let's get Johnny from Newcastle Fans TV. Welcome, Johnny. Evening, lads. How are you doing? He's okay. All good, fella. All good. Yeah, to all be fair, good. I, that's probably one of the nicest things you'd call me is the enemy. So I'll tell you what. Um, <laughs> no, it's, no, it's it's always good fun, isn't it? Like I say, it's um. It's, it's 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 good fun. Obviously, we've had a bit of back and forth over the last couple of well, eighteen months, I suppose, with uh, all the charity <laughs> stuff that we've done, and we've got a a big announcement, hasn't we, for another another game on the horizon for a very very good cause and special cause. And I know the loaded family are very very generous as well. Which um, over obviously for the the charity game last year, obviously they you know, I think obviously raised they raised a lot of money together. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, we can do the same again because it obviously we're doing it for a really good cause, and I'm sure. I'll let, I'll let you just tell everybody about it because it's obviously your it's your show and your and your and your platform. But uh, yeah, rivalries resume once again. They do, and we 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 will go into detail. But just just to let people know, pinned to, in uh, the top of YouTube as well is the link to the to the page. So you'll find it there, and we 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 can only accept donations via via the page. So if anyone would like to donate, and and the, the details and are, are all there in in the link. Uh, so uh and we will be talking a bit about more about it uh, during the show but uh yeah. shall we bring our new debbies and then disco dancing john <laughs> let's get him on <laughs> welcome john sinclair for his debut hey john yes <laughs> big, up, big up to you my guys big up to you pete big up to you and Daz, chris nice to see you as well chris big up to specs Nice meeting you as well, my guy, and um, a North London, North London lad. Um, big up to Big J. Um, big up to you, Miet, and thank you so much for bringing, you, bringing us on to your wonderful podcast, finally. Finally. There we go. And, uh, yeah, it's a place to have you. Um, you guys, uh, um, uh, three, are a great panel, and, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to put you to the test tonight. We're going to... Uh, and we're not going to throw a quiz at you, but we're going to we're going to ask you some some interesting questions. And um, I don't know whether to go. Boy, should I go for the jugular or not? Don't throw me under the bus, man. Don't throw me under the bus, man. You're going to think I'm a <laughs> fake Newcastle fan. I'm only from no. London, bro. It's no. totally hard out here for me, bro. <laughs> hey, these questions and these topics are all you you know about these boys. Um, I'm going to ask Chris and Daz. Are we are we going to go straight into it, or should we should we should we ease them in first? Go straight into it. Throw them under the bus if you have to, Pete. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Well, before we get in to it, um, let's get down to a big topic of conversation that's going all around the Newcastle United fans at this moment in time, and it involves this. Oh, he's gone there. Oh no. It involves this. Now, the question I have for you people about uh, St. James's Park is, the Newcastle United need a new stadium in order to take the next step. So, we'll get into it. Uh, lots of different conversations, lots of, lots of different points and opinions regarding this. Um, it's been the talk of the tune for the last week or so. But Johnny, I'll come to you first. In your opinion, do we need to move from St. James's Park in order to take the next step? Um, in my opinion, no, we don't. I think the ground we've got is 90% of what everybody else has got, if you think about it. Um, but it's such a very, it's a fascinating one. I think, I think the vast majority of Newcastle United fans do not want to move away from St. James's Park. And I class myself as one of those fans. I don't want us to move. I think we need to look at every avenue to expand St. James's Park. 
to a certain degree. And I've seen so many people saying, oh, what, we can fill out an 80,000 seat of stadium. I, I don't want us to kind of go to 80,000 or even 75,000 because I don't think we're that sort of club just yet. I think 65,000 is the maximum capacity I think Newcastle should go for. Should go for. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it caters for everybody because I would say at this moment in time, yes, there is, you can't get a lot of tickets, let's be honest, but I think if there was an extra 10,000 tickets available, I think that would justify everybody i think i think it wouldn't it wouldn't make the ground empty i think it would be full still um it's just that east stand isn't it that's the biggest thing because if you get that east stand right and the listed buildings can be moved or paid off because that's kind of what the, the conversations you're hearing at this moment and can they be moved to the next street if you like if the, if the club build or build the, the buildings behind it or make some buildings behind it that might move or whatever the, the uh, whatever the decisions are being made. But it's just, a, it's a very, very difficult one. But in, in answer to your question, I don't think they do. I think someone put up actually a really, really good point on uh, on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. You know, Manchester City have got 55,000, 56,000 in terms of capacity. And yes, they maximise all their hospitality side of things. You know, they've got a tunnel club, which is obviously a big, big seller. It's, ex- it's extraordinary. You can see the pictures and the videos. And it's extraordinary. But I don't think Newcastle are that far away from it, trying to increase every bit of revenue. You've got the, you've got the stack that's getting built now. That's going to that's gonna be part of the finances as well. So I don't think we personally need to. However, what I will say, this is going to be my last point before I let the others say their piece. I think the owners, if you ask them more privately, I think they'd all move away from St. James's Park like that. If I can click my fingers, I can't. But I think they would, <laughs> privately. I think that I think they would wholeheartedly move and create their, if you like, Sir Jim Ratcliffe's idea, a Wembley of the North, because they've got the money to do it and it'd be a drop in the ocean. Mm. Interesting. Uh, we, we get that conversation rolling. Uh, Specs, I'll come to you. In your opinion, um, you know, do we need to and, and and just to just to clarify what I mean by taking the next step as in as in that next step into that top six, you know, where you're getting that sort of revenue, where you're seen along the same lines as those type of teams. That in, in reference to taking the next step. Um Specs, what what's your thoughts on that? Because there's been a lot of talk about this. I I know for a fact you would have seen it on socials, that you would have seen the conversation. Mm-hmm. What, what, what do you make of it all? Well, first of all, there's two things. So let's keep it. The first thing is, no matter what, yes, I'm a Newcastle United supporter. I'm not from Newcastle direct, but let's keep it real. If you are from original Geordie Newcastle, no matter how much I love Newcastle, the actual original Geordies are going to feel it more. Do you know what I'm saying? I keep it real. Isn't it? I'm never going to deny that. For me, me personally, no. I wouldn't want to see it really. I wouldn't be one of the rare ones. Keep St. James is where it is. It's, it's something special, bro. It's, it's nothing like other like others. You get what I'm saying? And as a as a Londoner, I'm from London, you get what I'm saying? And I know there's a big difference in supporting clubs in the, like your local teams in London and up north is a different thing. I can just I see I support Newcastle all my life. I can see it like it's it's real personal. You get me? It's like a like a one town, one supporting club. As for the owners, which Jonathan alluded to right at the end of his um, comment, openly or privately, trust me, they could move, they will move, bro. Like he said, like that. Because at the end of the day, yes, they're here to elevate the club, but it's a business. Let's not ever get this twisted, bro. Do you get what I'm saying? You see the likes of what Spurs are doing in Tottenham, for example, where I'm from, I've seen it, I see what goes on there. If Newcastle could they've got the money for it, as you said, Pete. If they could move a stadium, if they've got opportunity to, of course, you think they'll care? They'll move that. It's a business. Make it, like you said, Wembley of the, of, of the up north, parties, F1s, gold, NBA games, whatever's going on. Do you get what I'm saying? Because it's a business. So, that's, if they had a chance to, they would move it. Me, personally, I don't want to. I want to keep it original. But, um, it is what it is. They didn't come in here just only for just the fans. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, they've got love for the fans, like it's balanced. But first and foremost, it's a business, isn't it? And they've got the money, and it's an ego thing as well. And it's like a playboy thing, isn't it? They want to put the money where their mouth is and do this. And the question is, is it right or is it wrong? That's the question. But for me, 
leaves here changes as it is. If you can expand a bit on it, so be it. I agree with Jonathan saying about 65,000, maybe 62. That's all right for now, in my eyes. But it's a business, and you've got to remember that. John, I'll come to you because obviously, you know, Specs and, uh, and Jonathan have made, made a couple of really good good points um, whilst sharing their opinions. Um, and, and Specs have just mentioned about 62, 65 would, would, would be an acceptable sort of a capacity. And first off, your opinions are on whether we should move or not uh, from your perspective. But equally, what what would you suggest if we were to stay at St. James's Park, St. James's Park what would be... Uh, an appropriate upgrade. We're at 52, nearly 53,000 as it is. What should we be looking to get to if we were to stay at St. James's Park? But what are your th- opinions overall, mate? Right. Um, for me personally, I mean, like, I'll, I'm in two minds of it. It'd be good to move um, to Lisa's Park just for a little bit. But for me, I mean, I thought about this today. I spoke to someone yesterday, but I thought about it now that it'd be better to stay at St. James's Park if you could um, expand the stadium, yeah. I think 65, 70,000 is enough. But um, I'll say stay where it is for now. But if they have to move the stadium, right, to take it to the next level, to the next step, then I have no problems at all whatsoever. I believe in the owners, I believe in the, sta- the stadium and the people. So for me, I would just say, I've changed my mind, leave us in gyms for now. And then, because it's iconic, it's um, special, and everyone remembers St. James's Park, but move it to, um, if it needs a bit of stadium move, move it to Lisa's Park, just further up the road from it, not too far away, and I'll buy that as well. So for me, I'll leave it as it is. And like the guy said, they got the money to buy a new stadium. If they want to move it or build a new stadium, they'll do it. No, it's, uh, it's an interesting one. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. Yeah, it, 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 this is not this is not easy. It, uh, it it's conflicted so many fans uh, for so many different reasons, um, and this is why it's such a it's not a straight shooting answer because uh, of the of the confliction that that it kind of holds with a lot of Newcastle United fans. But uh, Daz, you you kind of mentioned this to us the other day. You were talking about it and um, that you put a few things in, in our chat because it, it, in your opinion. Uh, do you think the owners are already looking ahead to potentially move it? Yeah, look, at, uh, I've been following this, like, like everyone, we've been following this for, for a while and everyone in the chat as well. Um, and um, yeah, the, uh, ideally, it's a, it's a, it takes Ban St. James's Park uh, it is option one, but if that doesn't look l- like that's going to happen uh, or be easy to do from all the discussions that are ongoing, even though they're getting the, the best architects available uh, to, to come up with plans, it doesn't look like the way they're going to go. Um, yeah, I have been looking at a few other channels and they've, they've gone, done an analysis on, on uh the, the locations where the, the potential stadiums could be. There's the, there's the arena that's closer to the, the river. There's Lisa's Park, but further into Lisa's Park, not right kind of joined on to, to, to St. James's Park, which I don't think is, is really, really feasible. Then that's, we know that the, the listed buildings are going to be an issue for any kind of uh, um, expansion as well of the East Stand. Uh, but I, I think there's this, this kind of... Anyone that has a season ticket... Definitely doesn't want to, to move. Uh, but uh, people that don't have a season ticket or find it difficult to get to games, uh, or um, they, they might be on a different a different page when it comes to this. But how I see it playing out, uh, and uh, I know we've been talking about this as well, is that I think they they they'll look at op- all options. They will look at uh, um, at the expansion as well, and what is actually feasible with that, and what kind of numbers they can get there. But I think in, in, we will be a few years down the road, maybe two years down the road, and a decision decision will be made then to, to to build a new stadium. I think it's 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 not going to be you wake up tomorrow and and that that's that that's going to be the way they go. It, it's going to take a while, and may, maybe maybe when we're in a, a good solid positive position, they'll, they'll announce something like that. But yeah, it will be a, a, a massive a massive. Uh, thing to announce that, that, that because that the, it will it will divide that the fan base if and when that that is to happen mm, no, definitely. and we have a poll running as well pete but the poll is in the ch- in the chat now as well so you have your say well whether you believe the question below whether it's a yes or a no for you 
get involved. People in the chat, people that are watching, uh, give your opinions. It'd be good to uh, to feed that back later on in the show. Um, Chris, I'll come to you. Um, lots of talk about Newcastle United's atmosphere, what we create, the uh, the strawberry corner, um, right up in in level seven uh, in the Leasers corner as well. The noise that's generated there and the atmosphere that it creates uh, around the stadium. A lot of fans seem to think that moving from St. James's Park will um, affect that moving forward and what is is sort of iconic and what, what holds with a lot of fans that don't support Newcastle United of what we bring when they come to our stadium. Do you think, as long as, along with your own opinions about this, hmm. do you think moving to a new stadium could potentially impact on that? I mean, potentially it could. Potentially it could, but... Let's not forget, you know. I know, I know that. Oh, see, it's, it's so it's so difficult this because I, I I don't want it. I don't want to leave St James's Park. Like I, I I don't I don't particularly want to leave. But on the other hand, I'm probably I'm probably more comfortable with a new stadium than most. And the reason being is, you know, we're 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 at the start of a new era now. And like this, this new stadium, if there was one to be built, it's not just going to be any old stadium. And as much as we all love St. James's Park and, you know, St. James's Park will always be fondly remembered. In my opinion, if we were to build a brand new state of the art stadium with 65, 70, 75,000 capacity, I think, I, I, I feel like that's when we'd arrive. I really, really do. Um, like I say, I don't sit here now and say that I want uh, I, w- I want us to get into St James's Park, but I just I just think you know I, I like Pete, me and you, we we've been to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, haven't we? And it, it, it is mind blowing. It's absolutely mind blowing. And you know the pride. I know a couple of Tottenham fans, and the pride that they have going into that stadium. It's almost like they're like, look what we've got, look what we've got. And I, and I just think with the, with these owners and the fact that money isn't really an ob- is is no object really. Um, you know things, things like that. You know, worrying about the atmosphere and stuff like that. These owners are very attention to detail, and again, because money is no option, I think all of these things will be considered. Like, I think the, you know, I don't think they just wipe the memory of St James's Park and just start afresh. I think there'd be a lot of things that they would carry through from St James's to the new stadium, uh, and I think there would be a lot of consultation both with fan groups, with you know fans. Uh, I, I, I don't see them just going and building a new stadium and going there. You go, there's your new stadium. I think there will be a lot of involvement uh, from the fan base, and I think they will listen. Um, the fact that you know the, they're already sending out you know questionnaires would would indicate to me that you know clearly they are interested to hear what the people want. Um, and I just I just think it's one of those where as soon as it happens, or as soon as we know we're getting a new stadium, I think we'll all start coming to terms with it. And as soon as that new stadium is built and we've got it, and you know it's new, it's fresh, it's big. It's imposing. I, I, I think, I think it'd be a, a wonderful thing. I really, really do. I really do. And if we can get more people in there, it can only, it can only be better. I mean, obviously, I may feel differently if I was a season ticket holder, as Dad says. I'm not a season ticket holder. I'd love to be a season ticket holder, um, but I appreciate that existing and current season ticket holders may not feel that way. But trust me, I think. As soon as that stadium, if if we do get a new stadium, if that new stadium is built, as soon as people walk through the door, they'll just go, wow. And I, I truly believe it will be it will be the best stadium in the in the UK as well. And that that's what I think appeals more to me. If it, if we were doing like a bit of a half arse job or you know, we were we were kind of scraping by to kind of erect some bang average stadium, then maybe maybe you know I would feel differently about it. But because of the owners that we like got, Everton. Well, I, I was I was trying to allude to that, Daz, but uh, no. To be fair, their stadium does look it does look like pretty good. I, I, I drive past it most mornings. It does it does look pretty good, but uh, I just I, you know there's a buzz around the city, and I think imagine that in Newcastle. Um, obviously, there's certain things that would need to be ticked, certain boxes. Uh, you you mentioned atmosphere, Pete, um, but there's there's lots of things, but um, I, I'm not I'm not close to it. I'll be honest, I'm not completely close to it. Um, you mentioned season tickets, Chris. I'll put this out to everyone, really. Um, w- will it affect season tickets if we get a new stadium? And and what I mean by that, do you think the club will open up a new round of season tickets to be available? Spectral nodding your head. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, because, no, and, and I've heard kind of conversation before, just in general. You know about I think if you remember they were talking about you know like because you know like for example obviously I go to mostly away games in it I don't really go to the home games obviously for obvious reasons in it I wish I could so I remember there was I can't remember I can't really find a way how to describe it there was something where you know like the ballots where they want to like revamp it but then obviously the hardcore original us longevity supporters they were like they, obviously our supporters are scared of let's just call them tourist supporters yeah. That's going to happen eventually, whether we like it or not. It's coming, bro. If not, it's coming already. I've already seen signs of it. Just, just, just for example, the official NUFC Instagram for the takeover, for the better, is that 100 and something thousand followers? Now you've seen what it is. So we've got to put the, the, the original fans in. You know what I mean? It, it, it's a tricky one. Because, like I said, and I'm, I'll say it again, whether we like it or not, it's a business to them. So when um, Chris was alluding to, which is right, you'll probably get all the fans involved. You know, like questionnaires and surveys. It's all bullshit, bro. It's all a smoke screen. Even if they do that, even if you had 90% fans saying no, brother, they're gonna do what they gotta do, bro. And it's, and it is what it is. Let's not push your foot around, bro. They own the crowd. Do you think though, Specs, that there would be yeah. I, I agree what you're saying. They will have a firm idea and there'll be some non-negotiables. They'll throw it in the survey, but they'll be non-negotiable yeah. and they yeah, yeah, yeah. want to do. But yeah. you know, in terms of like I mean I mean and more like, you know, the finishing touches and maybe oh, let's call it that because the fans want to call it that. Oh, oh let's okay. put that in there because the fans want it so that it feels like the fans have had an input on the stadium okay. rather yeah. than just there's your stadium, like, get on with it. Yeah. No, I agree with that. You, you you'd like to think so. That's a good point you made, you know, in terms of well, of course, they've got to give fans some say. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what, what, like, decorations, or if you want to put certain, you know, old mem memorabilia from the old stadium, or you know, that's, that's, what we could hope so. Otherwise, it'll probably be an uproar. Like, you've got to give uh, us some say, especially the season ticket holders. He's been there for longevity. But, um, I just, like, look, dare I say, and it's a scary thing to say, I've seen some of the comments saying, new stadium, as long as they still call it St. James or SJP. Brother, you know, like these name rights, that's that's one of the biggest things of marketing. You see the Etihad and all the Emirates. I really don't think they're hearing that. That's a, that's one scary thought. They probably call it, I don't know, something to do with Saudi or something. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? And then fans will have an uproar and then they'll try and intellectually speak to the fans and say, look, in order to go forward and, you know, and FFP, trust me, all it's just coming, bro. It's inevitable, but it is what it is. Like, I, you can't, I, think, just can't it well, specs, I, I don't think they should call it St. James's Park because I think that we've had St. James's Park. Like, don't get me wrong, if they were to rename St. James's Park now, I think it should include St. James's Park, like a Ramco at St. James's yeah. Park, just for an yeah. example. But mm. I, I actually think, you know, I think some fans wouldn't like the fact that they called it St James's Park if they built a new stadium because yeah. it's it's it, it's a new it's a new adventure. Um, yeah. Some people would want it still. But yeah. anyway, that's I'm too scared. I'm too. If you ask me, would I change the name from St James? I'm actually too scared to even give my opinion on that. So I'm not going to put my two pences on that one. I'm going <laughs> to trust me. Don't ask me. Please don't ask me, bro. You're a brave man. You're a very brave man. I leave it to you, Robbie. <laughs> yeah. like it is no, it's, it's an interesting one. I think, I think, I think the only way that they would actually kind of not get away with it, it's not the right, really the right words, but uh, it would only make it sort of right to keep at St. James's Park as if it was maybe built next to the, the, the current St. James's Park, um, Leeser's Park, it, there they could probably get away with that. And I, I agree. I agree. There'd be lots of workshops. There'd be lots of consultations, surveys, all the things that you boys would say. Um, but the big decision would lie with the ownership. They would come out, in my opinion, and say, we're getting a new stadium. New stadium's coming. However, this is what we want you to be a part of. We want you to be a part of this, this process and that process. And all the way up until that stadium is open, Newcastle fans will have the opportunity to have their say. Um, but the big decisions, in my opinion, will lie with the ownership. And for me, a new stadium's coming. It, it, it is. Like, regardless of whether people want it, whether, whether they don't, a new stadium's coming. 
And for me, the reason why the new stadium's coming is because if you look at every club, every club that's worth their salt, that are at the top of the, of the, top of the football chain, they have one of the state-of-the-art stadiums. There's no surprise. There's no su- surprise that Sir Jim Ratcliffe, and by the way, pay up, um, he still owes. Um, <laughs> worth. Um, I'm not forgetting it until you put that money uh, where your mouth is. Um, Show me the money. Yeah, show me the money. Exactly. <laughs> um, there's, no, there's no surprise that Sir Jim Ratcliffe has come into Manchester United and gone, we need a brand new stadium. Um, and there's no surprise that there's talk that Newcastle United are looking at a new stadium because where we want to be and where, more importantly, this ownership want to be, because they took us over wanting to be number one. There's no surprise that the, the likes of Amanda Stavely, Stavely and uh, Mirgad uh, Gadusi were, were talking about us winning the Premier League and w- chasing the Champions League and, and being at that sort of level. That's where they see us. I mean, not right now, but they want. that's where they want us to be as soon as possible. And with that comes a stadium that's befitting of one of the best teams in the world. Now, as much as we love St. James's Park, and I love it, as much as we love that stadium and as iconic as it is, in the modern football, you have to move with the times. And we talked about it with Tottenham Hotspur. Like, regardless of trophies, this is not a conversation about trophies. This is about being able to fight at the top table and be there and be able to have not just the best team, the best manager, the best owners, but it's about having the best stadium and the best facilities. And to have that, we have to have a new stadium because it's clear as day that that East Stand is not going to be able to be developed on. It's it, it, it's it's, get, it's becoming more and more obvious. I think there is uh, possibilities of being able to develop on um, uh, the Gallagate, but then there's problems with that, with the Strawberry Corner, with the Stack, with the Metro. All of these things are a problem, and they're problematic, and there's loads of twists and turns to get round in order to get even that expansion and that expansion of the Gallagher wouldn't even be that much. Um, it wouldn't be a significant amount. So therefore, I think at this point now, to be the best, we've got to do what the best are doing. You look at Barcelona and Real Madrid. They've got the space to de- redevelop their stadium. Look, Barcelona are playing at their training ground, I think, for the next two years to get and redevelop. That, that's New Camp's iconic. But they know in order to move with the times, they've got to redevelop their stadium. Look at what Real Madrid have done. They've literally got their, yeah. their pitch that can be cut up into six pieces and put underneath the ground. You know, they, they are moving with the times as much as their stadium is, but they have the ability. And the difference is they can develop around their stadium. We can't. So at some point, the ownership have got to suck it in and go, we need to make a decision now. We want a new stadium. We've said that we're happy to stay at St. James's Park now, but actually we need to move forward. And I actually think it's going to be quicker than people think um, where they actually make the decision on the stadium. But it's one that's going to rumble on, guys. It's one that's going to rumble on. But uh, any, any any additional thoughts on the stadium talk before we move on to the next section? I was just going to quickly add, and I've listened to a, a lot of what you've all been saying, and I, I think there's, there is some good points. There really, really is. I, think, I, I completely agree in the, the, the business side of things. Like, you have to move on eventually. However, what I will say is that if you ask West Ham fans if they agree with their new stadium, if you ask Tottenham, <laughs> they love their new stadium. I, I'm, I'm sure Spex can tell me when he sees all the Spurs fans outside his house saying, look at this stadium, it's amazing. They've not won anything. They've not won anything yet with it in it. Don't get me wrong, I know there's other reasons to, to say that and it's a, that's a different topic altogether. But moving stadium doesn't 100% guarantee your success. What it does is it gives you a bit of a chance to do so. It doesn't guarantee it though. The only, te- the only, the only team that you would argue that have moved stadium and it's worked out for them is Man City. But Man City weren't the Man City that they are now. So it's, 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 a, little bit, it's a little bit different. If you look at Liverpool, for example, Liverpool could have easily gone, right, where can I pick anywhere in Liverpool and build a new state? It doesn't matter because we, we will get the fans because we're Liverpool football. But let's be brutally honest, as much as it pains me to say it, they, can, they could fill out a 100,000 seat stadium. But what they've done is, is that they've realised that Anfield is so special to them to go, right, we are going to do everything in our, our power. And Anfield, I know, I know there's probably 
better people that they live in the area and they can probably tell me more. But I've been around Field a couple of times. It's there's not much space around Roundfield. There's a lot of housing around it, and they've had to kind of you know move things around. Like I've heard, I don't know how true it is, but I've heard that they've had to buy houses to kind of almost move them or have the yeah. right to say what they want to do with with that. So the Liverpool way, Liverpool model is to kind of go, well, no, we know what we've got here. We're going to make it even better if we can. If we can do that, then let's see what happens. Because let's be honest, if you ask a Liverpool fan, do they want to move away from Anfield? I, I don't think they would. And I don't think Newcastle fans want to move away from St. James's Park. So I think the, the hierarchy right now, as much as I've said before, I think they would move if they given the, if they had the choice. But I think they see the fans' backlash and they go, I don't think they want to get the, get the fans on the, on the wrong side to start with. Let's be honest, PR, PR-wise, they don't want the fans against you. And this is a very, very touchy, touchy subject. I think the fact that they've got architects in, they've got people looking in to see what they can do, is basically exploring every single avenue to go, right, can we do it? Can we physically do it? But how much change necessary do we actually need to make? Is it, is it a case that we want a, a five-star restaurant in the, in the ground, like a Spurs or whatever? Do we want, you know, beer places or whatever or do you want Greg's. just want a better in Greg's yeah, <laughs> Greg's, Greg's, yeah. Do. happily 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 pay Greg's prices inside St James's Park believe you <laughs> me but um no, but that, that's the thing we've got to just kind of decide what we want because at the end of the day we're still we're a football club we want to be we want to be a successful football club I, I, I'm I guess so you've all mentioned if you if you were a season ticket if you were a season ticket I am a season ticket holder I don't want us to move at all I'm very strongly against it I completely understand your points and I can understand the debate but I would love us to explore every single avenue. And if it means that we can get the, the 10, 15,000 fans more in, and you will get to see Newcastle a bit more often at St. James's Park, you'd still want to be at St. James's Park. I don't know if you want to be at the Aramco Stadium powered by whatever. You know, let's try and see what we can do. Just just one, 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 one thing, because we started to talk about it earlier when we moved on. But... Um, I imagine in that situation, let's say that they were building a new stadium, the, the season ticker, ticket holders in St. James's Park, would, to me, would automatically get get preference. Do they want a, their, their, their season ticket in, in, in the new stadium? Like, they wouldn't be, it's all it's all a free-for-all now and everyone can can go and uh, that, that would not be right. I think, I mean, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that would be the case. I'm assuming they would go, well, season ticket holders... You've got a certain amount of time to make your mind up whether or not you're going to go and yeah. sit in this brand new stadium, which is, you know, the best thing since sliced bread. But you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, they, 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 I think they've already got plans of where they would have this new stadium if they were to do it. I think they would, I think they've got to think like that. They've got to think of option B, option C, option D, and it wouldn't surprise me. But I think the fact that the ground is so close to the city is another big tick to the ownership going. You know, we've got everything there. Everything's around there. We don't have to do much, but I don't know. If it, if it was if if it, if the ground was moved to Leeser's Park, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, it doesn't really make a massive disruption. But again, where on Leeser's Park can you really do it? Like I've, I've walked around Leeser's Park. You can't just really stick it in the middle of Leeser's Park and go right. That's where the new stadium's going to be. It doesn't really quite work like that. So one thing here, just half off topic. The world is changing so much. All these businessmen, I wouldn't be surprised in the future, the way football changing and everything. I wouldn't be surprised if one day they said, you know what? We're moving the training ground to London to attract things. <laughs> bro, we can, it, it, it's scary. We can laugh. But, bro, trust me. Think, is it, even I'm laughing, but it's not a joke. It, bro. I'm telling you, you don't know where this future is going, bro. I wouldn't be surprised if it said St. James is training ground in the middle of bloody Stratford. You get me in Westfield somewhere behind it. And then and then and then I'm actually if you travel to Newcastle, just disconnected with the fans completely. It, it's crazy, bro. Like it's not like it used to be. You know what I mean? It's in the olden days where you've got the original local man, Englishman, buying a club. Them days are gone, bro. But sorry, I don't mean to scare people, but you can last, well, but you never know, bro. Well, it was like a number of years ago, Wimbledon were going to move to Dub Dublin at one stage. Right. I yeah. And then they moved to Milton Keynes. Yeah. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> I think, I think Pete, eventually, I think um, we are, we're going to end up moving to a new stadium. I kind of agree with you as well. I mean, for me, I mean, you have to go with the times if you want to take that next step. 
I looked at both sides, yeah. And um, for me, if I had the choice to move to New State instead of St. James's Park, I was starting to lean more now into a new stadium because I think we need to move with the times and um, be be up to the modern game. Like, you know what I mean? St. James could be a memory. I'm going to miss St. James's Park. It's always be iconic, historic, fantastic stadium. No one's going to forget it, yeah. But one day we had to end up moving because the, I don't think the East and East is going to expand. I really don't. And you said that yourself, it's not going to expand. But Lisa's Park, like I said, perfect. Yeah. Let's wait and see. Um, I, I've, I've just been thrown by the chat, Daz. I'm really sorry. Um, uh, we, we, we've got we've got a, we've got a guest in here, the other side the other side of the of the pond uh, where, where the rats live. Uh, Spirit of Thirty Seven. Those, when... those are guys from Netflix. Ooh, yeah. yeah. It, what the next not not the new man city one where they win the trouble it's the netflix one where they get relegated again and again that's oh, that no. that <laughs> 37 and and they've said to us that we're winning hey that's chris have we ever ran scared of a channel have, have, no. have, have we have we ran scared of, of an opposition hey spirit is 37 contact us come join us um i think the only ones that are fuming if you after we spanked you 3 0, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and we took a picture in the uh, in the uh, Jason Tindall stand, uh, that, that's where it was. Johnny, we did you were you at that game? I was, I was there to be fair. What you just need to do, boys, just don't roll out the red carpet because they do get a bit frustrated if you roll out the red carpet for some for these sort of occasions. Because, like I say. <laughs> You know, they, like I know for a fact you wouldn't change your background to red and white, would you? You wouldn't do anything like that. Oh, no, 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 no. No, uh, uh, no. We, we, no we, we wouldn't give out free drinks, would we? We would, would, would no. you, would you do that. <laughs> No, 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 we wouldn't. No, we wouldn't no. do that. No, would we? Uh, would, would, would we ever? Uh, contact us. Uh, let's get it on. All right, that's that's what I wanted to say on that. Um, and the poll results are in as well, yes. actually. Just we'll close off the poll. Mm. This is from a couple of minutes ago, could have changed since, but yeah, uh, 78% said yes, they, they, they believe that we, we do need to, to move to a new stadium, and uh, 22 said no. So, interesting, interesting. Yeah, quite, surprising. quite surprised by that, to be honest. Mm. Thought it would be a bit more balanced. That's quite surprised, it, it, they're still going, they're still going, mm. guys. Now, now they're just lying to themselves. Like, well, why, 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 why are they even lying to themselves? Um, but look, the, the, the respect is there in the end. Uh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, let, let's get that one sorted. So, yeah, look, interesting on the stadium, boys. We will come back to this and we'll talk about it again on talking to you because that conversation is going nowhere. Um, that is for sure. Um, however. Uh, a more light-hearted one. We got the win on Saturday. Big result. What we needed at St. James's Park. But an element of that performance, boys, and what your opinions on this. And um, and John, I'll come, John Sinclair, I'll come to you first. Um, from what we saw against the Wolves, um, was there a return of Eddie Howe's shithouse mags? Um, and what we mean by that is the the time wasting, the going down, the slurring of the throw-ins, all the stuff that we saw last season. In your opinion, did you see an element of that take place on Saturday? Yep, slightly. Go back to the old Newcastle for last season. I thought it was um, a good performance from us. But what I've noticed about Eddie, between, you know, there's a massive gap between the midfield and the defence, yeah? I've noticed straight away that's close together, yeah? They shut that down, defending properly. And then we play like a, a counter-attack in football, which is quite new. But uh, we started, um, didn't start that well because Neto had Danville on tours to gear and like, you know, but Fabian Shark came with a great tackle. But other than that, we just took control of the game. Then Wolves took over a little bit. And then we just got stronger. But yeah, slightly. I mean, like I said, the defence bit was close. And um, Joe Willett played really well. And um, yeah. It's back to our best, man. And I was just happy for the win. But I couldn't go on Saturday, unfortunately, because um it got snowed on there. No, it's uh it, <clears throat> it was it was definitely a, a big win and, and it was yeah. uh, it was interesting to see um the, the performance and how Eddie Howard had shaped up. But uh but Specs, did you see that element of uh of, of some some have labelled it the dark arts 
of Newcastle United. Did you see that uh, come to the fore um, against Wolves? In all honesty, unless I was missing something during my watch along, I didn't really see my, like, from what, I, what we've been used to from last season. If anything, I want to bloody see more. <laughs> I, get me, I, I didn't really see no shithousery. I want to see more. They've, they've, they've put the question to Eddie a few times, even before the match. Is that missing? But you know, Eddie's good at navigating his way through questions. He's like, what are you talking about? Obviously, he's, he's bantering. Um, I don't really see no shithousery. What I saw was um, well, first of all, I was surprised, apart from one or, one or two moments, I was surprised Neto couldn't really have the impact against Burns on that side, obviously in general. I, didn't really, I thought he would, he would be able to do much more, so I felt we handled that okay. What John Sinclair said, from what more I'm focusing on, what I've seen is, I, 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 I thought I was on the rail once to notice that where the midfield in general a bit more close to the defence. In the Blackburn game, I didn't really see that, especially when you're trying to pass the ball out from the back. So that was noticeable and the counter attack. And I give kudos to him that he tried, it was our usual intensity, all going forward, it worked. We're looking at a low block, but because to be honest with you, I don't know what you lot think of the panel. I thought Wolves not did anything in the end, end product wise, but I think they kind of had a bit of the better of us. But then when I preed it, over time, we grew. I think that was a plan anyway. Let them do their thing. Try and go on the counter. And it worked. I appreciate how's re- Now I want to see more, bro. But what I saw last season, I want to see more. We need Joe Linton back for that as well. The Bruno will always be Bruno anyway. But Joe Linton and the likes of that, I want to see them back. You get me? Real shit, how's re- I don't care about added time. You know, when when we frustrate a team and then all of a sudden, someone sits on the floor for no reason. And they sit there. I ain't seen enough of that. I ain't seen enough of that. I didn't notice that. Unless I missed something, forgive me, but I didn't see no any form of the shit house with that where it used to, and we need to bring it back. Definitely. Johnny, uh, as, as Spex has said, uh, you didn't see enough of it. He wants more. Do you want more? I, I, I do, but I think we've just got to be clever about it. Because obviously the rules are have obviously been changing where last year you could get away with it and still be four minutes of injury time or five minutes of injury time. Now there's eight, nine, ten, and that's not like a that's not like a, a regular occurrence. It's it's quite common now to have that amount of injury time. Sometimes even in the first half for for time wasting. I just thought Newcastle were very professional on the weekend. I really do. I thought Newcastle were really really professional, particularly the second half. I thought when especially after we made the substitutions, um, I think Wolves only had like a real ten minute spell in the second half. But he thought if they get a goal now, it could be a little bit edgy, but. I thought he managed the game really, really well second half. You could tell the Wolves were a little bit tired. Obviously, Neto came off at half time. They've obviously got the second choice goalkeeper in the net who obviously hasn't played a lot of games either. So um, it was a really, really good... I, I would say it was, it was managed really, really well. But I think the, the biggest thing that I took from it is that Joe Willock is so important to this Newcastle United midfield. He really, really was. I thought that him linking up with Isaac, Gordon, um, obviously Bruno helping as well towards back to particularly the first goal. I thought it was really, really good to see. Um, but the Joe willock that link up and partnership, if you like, was really, really good to see. We've missed that. And, you know, I was, I was out, it was funny, something that it just kind of popped up on my telly this morning of Isaac's pass for, uh, sorry, not Isaac's pass, Willock's pass for Isaac's goal against Tottenham. Just little things like that. I know that's like a rare occurrence, that sort of pass. It was an amazing pass. But the game on Saturday, we saw little bits of them linking up. I thought, well, if we can get 12 games of this, you know, we're going to get goals because he's like, his his record for Newcastle is absolutely frightening. I think it's one and two, or might even be better, slightly better than one and two in the Premier League. So if you keep him fit, you keep Willig fit, then Newcastle will be in a lot of games and we'll get a lot of chances. But um, in terms of the shithousery, we did a lot of it last year. It worked. Everyone seems to be copying Newcastle's penalty trick at Forest last year where everyone, you give it to somebody else, I'll give the ball to John Sinclair to take the penalty, but he's not happy taking it, expect <laughs> taking take it. So, you know, a lot of things like that. But um, yeah, I'm, 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 uh, it was it was good to see the old Newcastle back, if you like, on Saturday. Definitely. You, you mentioned about goals being scored. I looked at the league the other day. I, we, we, I think we've only scored uh, three, two or three less than Villa. Um, I think we've only scored like six six goals less than than I think the the, the top three. Like we're not far away from scoring goals. Like we, we we know how to put the ball in the back of the net. This team does. That's for sure. But then you look at the conceded. 
and I think we're 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 only eight different from from Villa, so it's not a massive amount. But then you look at the rest, you look at Arsenal's, the Man City's, like the the gap is 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 a lot wider uh, from from that perspective. But um, that's Chris. I've got a different question for you, a different question for you to answer. Um, we talked about how good the performance was on Saturday, and we talked about um, the. the the man who, for most people, thought was man of the match. Um, uh, this man, not everyone thought he was man of the match, but certainly uh, uh, realised and recognised how good he was. Um, my question to you boys, and 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 uh, Jonathan, John, Specs, get involved in this conversation as well. But that's Chris. Um, how much in today's market is Bruno Gamera's worth? Now we don't want to lose him. And we know he's got that buyout clause, but forget that for a second, that release clause, whatever it is, forget just on merit, on his ability, how much is Bruno Gomez worth in this market? But Pete, to answer this, I'm not going to look at you as I answer this. He's not leaving. He is not leaving. No yeah. way is he leaving. Uh, he ain't, he ain't leaving. But, but a, a no-look answer there. Um, yeah, no... 150 million. I think we 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 did talk about this uh, about a couple of months ago. But I'm saying 150 million. I know you said ignore the release cost, which is probably around 100 million. Uh, but yeah, I, I I really don't want to see him go. Um, he just he, he's he gets everything. Uh, even even uh, on Twitch, you saw, you saw. I'm sure you saw the the clip going around and he answering this is Joe Linton signing the contract and chanting, singing the chants. He just. You can't, we can't replace but that. Whatever about his, his his quality, which he is total quality. Uh, um, he, for me, is is one of the first names on on the team sheet as well. But it just his personality as well. He just gets everything. You cannot replace that. It doesn't matter if you brought in five players for uh, to with the, the cash you get from. Well, because you're probably good uh, and good at a good price as well with with the FFP and uh, PSR and so on and so forth. But no. He can't. He can't leave. Do whatever you, whatever you, what, do whatever you can to keep Joe Linton, but also to make sure we don't let Bruno go. Yeah, give him whatever he wants, whenever he wants it. Chris, what are you thinking, fella? Bruno Gamerez, what's his worth for you? I mean, you know, Daz was right in what he says. You know about what he's worth to us. Um, his true market value, in my opinion, is probably between 100 and 110 million. That's where I think his actual value is. In terms of what he's worth to us, um, it's yeah, you can probably add a few million onto that. I'd say probably like 120, 130 million. Um, just because he's so integral to to what we do, he gets he gets the club, he gets the fan base, um, he gives 110. percent He's a winner, isn't he? You can see that he, he, the way he acts on the pitch, the way he acts off the pitch, he he brings so much to this team. Um, but yeah, I, I I think it really if if, if I'm trying to be grounded, his real market value is somewhere between 100 and 110 million. I'm basing that merely merely on the Declan Rice deal when he moved to Arsenal. I I think he's in and around that figure. If I'm being honest, um, Bruno Bruno is an absolutely fantastic player, and you know I'm a huge huge fan of his. Um, but yeah, for yeah, for me, I'd say around there. But you know, if we if we got north of one hundred and ten million, I think we'd have been doing well. Being honest, boys, throw your opinions in. Uh, whoever wants to go first, Bruno Gomez, what are you thinking? Um, I'll go first if you want, guys. <laughs> for me, I think he's priceless. The guy is priceless. But if you've got to put a valuation on this guy. You talk about 130 million quid because I tell you what, Declan Rice is worth 105. This guy's got to be what 130. He can play anything anywhere in midfield. He can shoot. He can pass. He can tackle. You can tell by his face he loves the club. Yeah, you can tell by his he's got a passion, the hunger, the desire to play for this football club. Yeah, but also Bruno wants to win trophies. That's the thing. And I hope he's with us. I hope he wins the trophy with us. Yeah. Uh, maybe in the FA Cup or then next season win something again. But he loves the club, Pete. He loves the club. And I think he'll stay for another year, maybe a year or two more. But I don't want to keep him all the time. Yeah. Go on, boys. I, 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 it's, it's so difficult because I, I take Chris's point that 
he, it's it's different. It's different than actually what we think he's worth to what the club think he thinks he's worth. I think that's quite important because um, someone was saying in January when we were linked with Dominic Solanke, you know, Bournemouth won sixty million pounds. I don't think he's worth sixty million pounds, but Bournemouth no. will value Dom Solanke at sixty million pounds because of how important he is in terms of. Um, in terms of obviously keeping Bournemouth in the in the Premier League week week uh, week in week out etc. Well, year in year out, I, I I look at Moises Caicedo and Declan Rice and Moises Caicedo is 115 million pounds. He's he he he's, he doesn't even tie Bruno's laces for me. In, in my opinion, I don't. I think Caicedo is good as what he what he does, but Bruno offers just so much more. Um, I'd be looking at 150 million pounds. I think the only thing that stops. Bruno Guimaraes being the complete midfielder is his pace. If he had, if he was quick, bloody hell! If he was quick, because he can defend, he can, he can look like that pass was ridiculous on the weekend. He, he, he's, I, I said this, I said this the day after. I think he's the best player I've seen in a black and white shirt at St James's. In my opinion, I just, I just think he is just that good. We are so different when we don't have him in the team. Um, it, it's, it is just frightening what the drop off is. Is it's frightening when we talk about how good Joe Willock's been, we talk about how good Joe Linton's been to Nali. You know, Longstaff's had, had his moments, but they don't go anywhere. They don't, nobody's near him, nobody is near, near Bruno Guimaraes. He's just he's that good. Um, but if I have to put a price on him, I'm looking at around about the 150 million pound mark in terms of how much he's worth for Newcastle because that's it, it, literally that is how much he's worth. You know, he, see what he is, he's a brand new stadium, that's how much he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what? Do you know what, Johnny? Just as you mentioned, this pace. You, 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 for me, you're absolutely right, and I think it, it sounds horrible to say, but if Bruno Gomeres had pace, he probably wouldn't be playing for us. That that's how good he'd be. He would be absolutely ridiculous if he if he could get about the pitch quicker and he had that base to pace in him. He'd be at Real Madrid all day. And I'm not saying that he wouldn't end up at Real Madrid one day, but I think that's the only reason he wasn't picked up sooner because he's not got that base to pace. And as we know, especially in the Premier League, like having pace is is a massive advantage. But, but just and just that, to counteract that, what what he does have is passion, right? He, yeah. That that long bust and run, to, and then he got the shot off. It was yeah. deflected by the defender, and it was followed up by by Isaac. And also, just just uh, another example of getting it. I don't know if, if you saw. I think it was from um, uh, Jordi Perlo today. Uh, he, he there was a kids game, uh, and this this little kid does a tackle on another kid in an indoor soccer match, and uh, gets the ball and kicks it out of, out of play. And goes to the crowd, yeah. And uh, he ta- tags him in and goes, "This is what what Bruno's kids are like." And Bruno's back laughing at it, like he just he just gets it. He's, he's with he's with the fans. He, he's he's all, he's he's part of it. Uh, so uh, we, we never want to lose that. He isn't going to get that anywhere else. We've said it before. No. We'll say it again. He isn't going to get that love and respect anywhere else at any other club. He could go to a bigger club and win trophies and and, and, and play really well there, but he isn't going to get the love and respect. That Newcastle are to give him that that's for sure. But it goes back, it's a great it's a great point about the about the um about the pace because haven't we seen a difference in what he's been able to do since we've had Joe Willick in the team? And and that is so key. And what I found really interesting that, and I'm going slightly off topic, so I do apologize, is that he came out and said that he's he's so happy to be playing with Joe Willett because I think he realizes how important he is. And although he's not got that pace. He is very, very clear. If you have the right players around him, he will still do what those world-class midfielders with pace are able to do. He just needs the right components around him to do that. So he's had Joe Linton for the last two years or so. He's had Joe Willock, sometimes both of them either side of him, mopping up when Sean Longstaff's been on fire on one side, Willock, Joe Linton on the other. He's had everything around him where he hasn't had to do those recovery runs. But he's been made to do it this season. He's really struggled. But he's still been able to dictate the ball. Still been able to find the pass. Still been able to do all of that good stuff. Um, and I just think with Willock being back now, that is, I think that could potentially unlock him for sure. Um, but Specs, I'll come to you. Two two quick things. One, your value on Bruno Gamares. And two, and I just want, I just want, a yes or no from all of you. Do you think Bruno Gamares can last the six games, I think it might be, without <laughs> getting a yellow card? So, Specs, I'll come to you first on that. 
your value on him, and can he achieve the next six games without getting a yellow card? I'll try and make it quick here because so many things said. Um, you know, I never, I never ever want him to go. You get what I'm saying? He's not just a talented baller. He's one of us. Do you get what I'm saying? Like he literally embraces the fans. Like he, like he's not fake. He loves the fans, bro. He feels the love and he appreciates it. In terms of saying 150 and all that, nah, not for me. Do you get what I'm saying? Like I, I love Bruno. I don't think I love him as much as everyone else does on that level. But he's one of our main guys. Um, I say 150, 120 max. I feel the pace obviously ain't there, but it's not everything. His athleticism, I think, lets him down at times. And you see the proper best out of him, as you alluded to, Pete, when you've got the runners like the Willocks and the Joe Lintons. That's when you're going to see the best out of Bruno. But you can't ask too much of him, like I said, the athleticism and the pace. I think 115, 120. I wouldn't say 150. I wouldn't go that far. And just quickly... Jonathan, because I've missed what he said. Did you say um, Bruno's the best in black and white and what in terms of what mid midfield you've ever, you've ever seen? Or oh, I, I missed best, be No, no, best. No, you're right. Best player I've, I've ever seen at Newcastle. I've, 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 I, for me, Specs, he's just got the whole lot. And we talked well, about he's the best face. you've ever seen in a black and white shirt. I, I think so. I just, I just think, and I just think for my, for myself, just watching it. Only Bruno Guimaraes changes the game against Nottingham Forest a few weeks ago. We don't, we don't win that game without Bruno Guimaraes. But, but in midfield, do you mean any players you've seen? All the players in terms of anyone that's wore a Newcastle shirt that I've seen in the last twenty odd years or so, I've not seen a better player than Bruno Guimaraes. In my personal opinion, there'll be people that my dad will tell you to he's blue in the face at the best player that he's ever seen. It's Peter Beardsley. He said he was a magician. Yeah. He says he, he could, he, if he was playing in today's game, he'd be worth 150 million. We have this debate quite a lot. But yeah. for me, he is Bruno Guimaraes. We talk about his pace, but he's, 30, he's like he's five seconds quicker in his head. Like that pass for Mickey in the second half, he is the only player on the pitch that could do that pass. Mm -hmm. For me, there's only, I think there's only a slight debate that, Man that the only the Manchester City midfield is a, is a midfield he would struggle to get into. When all the Man City players are fit, yes. does he? In terms of oh. Rodri, De Bruyne, and Bernardo Silva, yeah. he potentially struggles to get into that midfield. But any other midfield in the yeah. world, he gets into that midfield. The Man City one, you can have that debate, but yeah, yeah. that's that's how highly I rate him. He's just so intelligent. Like passes, yeah. like we're kind of working out what passes he's going to make. But the yeah. passes that he does make now, we're going two years going. How did he even see that? Like, how did he even see that pass? Like, I remember the, like when he had that run of games. I think it was the Wolves game from a couple of years ago on a mm. Friday night. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking to my mates going, where have we got him from? Like, how good is he? Nah, he's like, he, he, he proper. I just, sorry, sorry, Pete. I don't mean to go on in it. Like, cause this is why I love football, you know. This is why I love debates amongst the Castle fans when it's respectful and just, you get me? But I'm just, I'm stunned that you're saying that, bro. <laughs> like, like for me, I'm going with Johan Kabayi over Bruno all day. For me, Ooh, for me, wow, oh, I'm going with Kabayi all day long. People have to agree, but I'm not scared to say my opinion. I know, so I, I, I don't think like I, don't, he's never come. Bruno's never come in my head for me to think. Oh, is he the one the greatest I've ever seen? Like, nah, not not for me. But um, because I don't waste all time, I'll go forward and say, can Bruno get a yellow card in the next? Won't get a yellow card. I think he's bound to get one. Someone's going to push him to the edge, and he might. He's doing well so far, but the, the question is, yes, he will get a yellow card. And to Jonathan, it wasn't worth having a go at your opinion. I was just, it's just a beautiful thing. If you're having a go at me, I'll tell you now, honestly. No, I'm not, not me. <laughs> nah, it's all love, bro. It's all love, man. Yeah. It's no, all it's love. Just, it's, 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 a, it's a, like you said, it's a great debate to have, and, that, and that's the thing, like, Pete might say that Bruno's better, better than everybody. You know, Daz might say the same. It, it doesn't make a difference for all Newcastle fans. And, and that's what it's all about. There's people in the comments that are saying that I'm right, that I'm wrong. You know, it, yeah, it's, it's all debatable. It's, that's debate. It's just, that's why everybody loves football, isn't it? That's why we all love it. Yeah. But share with the goal, though. Let's just keep it real. But you can, you can carry on. <laughs> share with the goal. And I think that's Jeff, that. Jeff Hendrick is in with the shout as well. For, oh. for... <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jeff. Here's Dave. Well, right, we'll go around from Johnny to John and then round to you, Daz, uh, Chris. Um, <laughs> is Bruno getting a yellow card? Yes or no? I think it's about, is, is it about, I think it's about six games. 
I think he's going to get through. 32, yeah, he has to get to. Yeah, he's getting the yellow card, unfortunately. John, what are you thinking? Um, so six more goes, go. He's doing well, isn't he? But I think he'd go the distance. I don't think he'd go to a yellow card. I think he'd be fine. Okay, Daz. <sighs> I, I'm I'm amazed that he's lasted this long. I I really selfishly I hope he doesn't get one against Chelsea because if he does, we're going to miss him because we're over for the West Ham game. Uh, but I I think he he will he will after that. Yeah, get, please not at the Chelsea game though, uh, so we get to, get to see him. But uh, no, but yeah, I think it's going to happen as well. Chris, what are you thinking? I don't know. Yeah, I think he's got this. You know, I think he's got it. I mean, we saw, didn't we, in the uh, in the Blackburn game, where he he was like a Rottweiler because I think he knew that if he was to get a yellow card, it wouldn't make a difference. I think there was a t- when we were watching it on, um, on when we were watching the match live, there was this tackle he went in for, and it was like, whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? So like it, that clearly showed me that you know the the sh- he's not letting the shackles off. So I I actually think that I think he'll do it because. Like we've just been talking about, boys, you know, he, he, he is very much a team player and he loves the club. And he, I think I think if he gets a yellow, he knows he's letting a lot of people down. Um, so for me, I, I think he'll hold his head. I, th- I think he'll avoid the yellow card. Providing we keep everyone fit, <clears throat> I think we've got enough around us for him to not be able to, not need to overcommit himself. I think he was really good actually against Wolves recovering the ball, particularly in the second half. I mean, he made some important tackles, but it wasn't anything that would have given anything away. It was almost mopping up. But that's because Willock worked so hard off the board. Yeah. And there was a lot of tracking back from a lot of people. Gordon, Willock, um, uh, Longstaff at times, or the, although he wasn't great, he, he, he did a lot of that mopping up. And I think if we can do that, there's a chance. I think Les has put in the chat, it's five games, not six, which uh, is it's, it's, it's still a long time, but it's music to my ears that, it's, it, uh, that I got it wrong by one game. That it's even closer <laughs> than I thought it would be. But um, look, um, I'll just give a shout out to everyone in the chat. We've had 270 in the chat tonight. Um, so we should hit your target, Daz. Easy to uh, 200 likes. Come on, on. You know I mean? do the right thing. Of course, get in there and get it done. Look, I had a few other topics. I'm not going to go through them all, um, uh, but I don't know if you want to talk about the big game, 29th of March. Uh, uh, to talk about what what's what's coming up, where revenge will be sweet. Is what I'm going to say. Revenge will be sweet. <laughs> Let's bring up the poster, I think, about it and, and let yeah. people know uh, what, what's happening. Um, Pete, do you talk, talk us through what, what's happening? Just just for people as well, as I said at the start, uh, the link to uh, to uh, donate to the to charity is um, at the top of the YouTube channel, uh, the, the chat. And also, if you can scan the QR code uh, on your phone, uh, go and open your fo- uh, photo, uh, pointed towards the QR code and that will take you into the, the same link basically so uh, that is there but uh, Pete tell us a bit more about the actual game and I'll leave this up on, on screen for a minute or two yeah uh, we uh, it's got to be about a year ago now Johnny isn't it we uh, we kind of spoke to each other and uh, we, we'd had a chat we knew we were coming up to Newcastle um, in April last year and we talked about doing something um, together doing a little charity football game and it kind of spiraled into um, you know, raising money for charity. Um, it was a, uh, the Gateshead Food Bank that we, we chose on that occasion in April and we raised a, a lot of money um, for a really, really good cause there. Great game, um, good knock around. Um, one team got very lucky and got the win. Uh, one team, uh, unfortunately, w- w- was, w- was screwed over. But uh, we won't go into those sorts of details. Uh, however, uh, the second annual charity match is up and running. And uh, look, Johnny, uh, I have to say massive thanks to you to kind of putting that together and, and arranging it. And we uh, sort of we agreed as two channels to to raise money for for a different charity this year. And we've chosen the Alan Shearer Foundation. Uh, we know it's a fantastic um, organization and what they do and how they support and help um, people, not just in the region, but but mostly in, in the region. Um, and that's taking place 29th of March, Friday 29th, 
um, at Forest Hall. Uh, I believe three o'clock kickoff. Yeah, um, good old, good old Friday, three o'clock kickoff. And then he said Saturday there. Um, but yeah, no, it's um, for the Alan Shearer Foundation. I think we all, obviously, Alan, Alan Shearer, so obviously, we don't, we don't need to say how much of a legend he is, but what he's done charity wise is nothing short than remarkable, if I'm honest. It's, it's amazing what he's done for, you know, for all sorts of people with all different um, needs in terms of needing a bit of help in certain, in certain areas. And obviously, the Alan Shearer Centre has been created and it's helping a lot of people, you know, obviously, parents as well because obviously they're getting a bit of respite and it does need money to keep going every single year it's a lot of money that has to be uh, has to be you know uh, you know has to be raised every year um obviously we're trying to help do our little bit and i can like i said like i can only really thank yourself all the loaded lads from last year because for the gateshead food bank you know the loaded family were absolutely outstanding like i mean really really well he's really shocked so if, if again I, I, I say this all the time because times are very very tough and i mean and i do mean that i understand that we, we know we we know that times are difficult so if anybody is in a position small whatever they can donate that would be honestly really really appreciate we've got a we've got a little target in mind me and peter set out um obviously for 300 pounds we've started okay i think we'll start we've obviously had a few donations i'll obviously have a look after we finish the um obviously after the after we finish this show but as well and see how we get on but if, if anybody's in a position to 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 donate and watch a newcastle fans tv win by at least five goals and <laughs> <laughs> i saw so that in the so chat good. earlier so yeah. uh, <laughs> he snuck that in there yeah. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what it is i like, honestly does you probably not know this but honestly we nearly did it for the pete davy foundation because he was he was crying that much from last year right? <laughs> <laughs> was, honestly we, he, honestly he couldn't, he couldn't, couldn't get up, couldn't get over the fact that we absolutely battered them last year and yeah, obviously, oh, what, what, it just it, it got it just got oh, that embarrassing in the end. We had to carry him home that night. We had to carry him home that night. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, that was for another that, reason. And that was and that was, and that was <laughs> <laughs> How many drinks did you have that night? <laughs> <laughs> I think we all had a good idea. I'm not gonna lie, but uh, yeah, we um, we definitely can't do the same. Which we all might miss, miss the uh, miss the match the next day. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank, thank, God thank God for the early kickoff. Yeah. Thank God for that early kickoff on the Easter Saturday. Whose idea is that? <laughs> but, uh, no. No, it should it should be a great occasion. Like I say, hopefully Chris gets there on time for a change. That would be really good as well. Um, Happy day. You know, yeah, because <laughs> he, he decided to come in after you were, you were about 10 down or something at that point. So he, oh, he was nice to have a get lost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they would, I think they would like by like one goal, one or two goals. Like, no, it was at least five. Yeah, from Bruno's Magic Hat. Bruno's Magic Hat. He's <laughs> yeah. 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 the, the, big, the biggest miracle in this is that. Sam Mullen never plays these games, but because we're doing it for the Alan Shearer Foundation, he's made an exception. He's even bought shin pads. He's even bought wow, shin pads. He's that much better. It means business. I know, I know it means business. Honestly, he's a that's Sky Sports Sam. That's Sky Sports Sam. Guy. Sky Sam. Oh, wow. Yeah, Sky Sports <laughs> Sam Mullen is playing. Yeah, so he's uh, he's making a rare appearance, but um, yeah, he's he's traveling up because he's. He's only just been told this, but I've managed to sort my ticket for West Ham, so that's why he's in a he's in a he's in a good mood as well. So um, <laughs> he's 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 fully expecting to get a ticket in the ballot now because obviously he just knows that's going to happen. He hasn't had, I think I think he's got one ticket in the ballot all season, but um, yeah, he's feeling sorry for himself. So we're getting him a little violin with the winnings as well. And the mind games have started already because I'm sure it's Lee. I'm I, I bet it's Lee Lawler. He decided to switch the logos round to, to move move I, one I, bag over wrong. to where. Oh, who was you're it? Wrong. You're wrong. It was Sky Sports Sam. Sky Sports ah, Sam. Because I, I I I thought maybe I'd go one one better and and uh, color in Newcastle fans TV red and white stripes. But I thought it might go a bit too far. I thought, I thought it was going to, I thought there was going to be a one gold star underneath us for how many wins we've had against each other. So that, that, that's what I thought it would be. But uh, yes, he was, he, was, he, was being, he, was being, he was being quite polite that day. But um, no, in all in all seriousness, if people want to come along and watch it, it's in Forest Hall, it's a Forest Hall Sports Centre, I think I believe it's called. It's literally the only place you can play football in in Forest Hall. So um, yeah, if people want to come down, it's a three o'clock kickoff on Friday, the twenty ninth of March, raising funds for the Anshira. Um Centre, obviously, which is part of the Anshira Foundation. Um, obviously, I know you've got. I've got the link as well. We're putting the uh, the link on the uh, 
on every video we do from now until the 29th as well. So yeah, if anybody's in a position, like I say, a quid, five quid, 10 quid, whatever he can afford, you know, um, that'd be, it'd be greatly appreciated. Greatly appreciated. Definitely. Um, as Johnny, Johnny said, and absolutely right, uh, if you can, uh, please make sure um, you, you go and support um, the Alatira Foundation. We give a donation, anything you can, as you said, and that would be, um, that'd be amazing. Uh, for, for sure, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be looking to we'll that's be looking to equal the score. That's that that's for sure, and and who knows? And you said that against us, is not it? Equal the score. <laughs> you know, we were winning, we were winning for for a little bit of that game. That's for that's for sure. When, so you, 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 you were ahead way. for a good fifteen start, seconds. Yeah. Honestly, it was a great it was a great fifteen seconds that you were ahead, and then obviously we. We basically woke up and we thought, you know what, well, we actually should give them a proper game now. It's like, you know, when you're playing Xbox and you're kind of going like that and you're like taking it serious. That's all it was, really, wasn't it? Oh, to be fair, I think it was, it was partly our own fault. We did an Eddie Howe. We, we made too many changes. We swapped too many things around. We didn't keep to the structure. Injuries. We were a man down as well. We were a man of the squad down. Chris wasn't there. But then when we came in, me and Chris at the back, we just shored things up. You couldn't get near us. You couldn't get near us, and, and we, you know, we went, we went uh, full on Eddie Howe. Uh, well, I thought, well, I thought Chris is the new Anthony Gordon, anyway. He's like the Anthony Gordon of loaded bags, <laughs> so we've got no chance of it. That's, That's just a no picture chance. behind him. Don't get confused. Yeah, by, yeah, by, by that. <laughs> <laughs> but well, we, we plan to make Good Friday, Good Fridays, great again. So uh, yes. looking forward, yes. forward to the game. So uh, that would sure be a good. Gold. Really good. Um, Last one from me, and it's a really, really quick one before we um, uh, we we sort of wrap up. It, it, is this, uh, and we've, we we talked about um, we talked about the league table. Um, I'll just drop it up really quickly, um, uh, and we talked about whether you know we can get European positions. We're certainly in the mix for it, but we have um, a, 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 we have a decent fixture list. Um, We've got a tough game on Monday at Stamford Bridge, no doubt about it. But but Chelsea aren't in amazing form at all, um, and, and we can go there and win. So we've got Chelsea away, uh, the FA Cup aside, focus on the league. We've got West Ham, what we're talking about that Easter weekend um, at St James's Park, and then we're at St James's Park again against Fulham. Uh, not Fulham, sorry, Everton. Not long after that, on the second of April. And my question to you boys is. Um, from those three fixtures, what is an acceptable points total uh, in those games? Chelsea away, West Ham at home, Everton at home. Um, Chris, I'll start with you and we'll work our way round mm. the round the houses. So, in your opinion, what's an acceptable um, points total for, from those games? I'm I'm setting a high bar here, Pete. Um, so to to answer the question of what's acceptable to me, acceptable would be seven points. I'd say a draw to Chelsea, and I fully expect us to beat West Ham and Everton at home. Um, obviously, I want nine points, but I if the, if the question is what's acceptable, acceptable would be seven points to me. Specs, what are you going for, fella? I like, I like the way you put that. You know, I like the way you put that. Um, seven points. You could you could go with that, but in all honestly, honestly, should I say, I don't see why we can't get the all, all nine points. Mm. Looking at it now with the plays back as well, yeah. I read like obviously it's a hope that kills you, but looking at it, what is it? We've got two home games out of those out of those three, right? Yeah. West Ham, yeah. West Ham and Everton yeah. home back to back. Yeah, man. And Chelsea, yeah. I, I don't see why we couldn't nick three points from Chelsea away. They're hot and cold. Well, they're not hot and cold, but it's mostly cold. So, like I said, if you can stick to this momentum and this confidence we had from the Wolves game, and like I said, it's so important. We've got certain players back, the likes of Willock, etc. Um, Tino might get a run now. He might get a run because I'm not sure about Trip's injury or what, how that's going on. So, yeah, I, I, um, seven points will be... I'll take that. That's reasonable. But nine points is not out of question. It's not impossible. Johnny, what are you going for, fella? What, what do you think is an acceptable uh, points total? Uh, six or seven. Six or seven, I think, is acceptable. I think we, we've got look, we've got an awful record at Stamford Bridge. We've, I think we've only won once in the Premier League era um, and Cissé scored those two goals, which is my 18th birthday. I know I don't look a day over 21. 
Um, but no, in all seriousness, um, I, I think I always fancy against literally the only team at home I feel before a game if you offer me a point, it's Man City. Um, I even put Liverpool into that sort of equation. I think we can beat Liverpool if we don't capitulate and with 10 minutes to go. But um, West Ham will be a tough game. West Ham are a good team. Obviously, they're in and around where we are right now. I think obviously they're slightly above us. So that will be tough. But at home, you would feel a bit confident. Um, Everton are a bit of a free for all at this moment in time. The, the manager's just not getting wins. Um, Everton, I think, I, think, I think we've beaten Everton last two or three seasons at St. James's. So you would expect three points there. And the fact that they can't score goals and Newcastle can score goals and Newcastle can defend properly, Newcastle should be Everton. So Chelsea, this Chelsea team is rubbish. Like it is absolutely rubbish. And I still find it so hard to they forget about that um, quarter-final Carabao Cup game. I really, really do. Because if we just decided to screw our heads on for two and a half minutes, we would have been in the final against Liverpool's kids. And we would have. I don't think we would have been called the black and white billionaire bottle jobs. I think we might have had a chance of um, competing and winning in that game. Who, but who knows? But uh, no, I think six or seven points. I think West Ham's, I think West Ham out of the three is probably the most tricky. But Chelsea's probably the most likely where we drop points as we just have a horrendous record at Stamford Bridge. John, what are you thinking? Um, uh, points wise, yeah, um, I'm going to go with what so Johnny said about Chelsea. I mean, Chelsea are, are poor at the minute. Like, this is not the best Chelsea team that I've seen for. It's not a good Chelsea team at all. I can't lie. There's only a couple of individual players can do it. Cole Palmer is a cracking player. I really like this kid. I don't know, and Conor Gallagher, I like him as well. I know some people don't, but at the end of the day, right? I don't think this Chelsea team is that great. I think we could beat them. I really do think we can. And West Ham's going to be a bit tricky at home. West Ham will probably, under David Moore, he's going to make it tough for us, yeah. But I think we'll probably get away with that. Everton, it's a must win game. We have to win that game. No, there's no buts. Everton and battle of relegation. For me, I'm going to say between seven and nine points, yeah. Minimum seven points will take for that, Pete. Daz, what are you going for? Yeah, I agree with what most of the lads are saying. I, especially what Chris was saying at the start of the start, this, the, the seven points is the minimum you'd expect. I want all nine. Uh, and I think we can get all nine as well. Um, the trickiest one for me is, is the Chelsea away. Uh, we have to smash West Ham. We're, we're at that game. Uh, and the, the, the Chris Hall derby. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a no-brainer as well. Uh, but a key factor will be, will we have Bruno for all three games? It, it's going to be uh, key, and someone said that in the chat uh, as well. Um, so, but yeah, go, let's go for nine. Why not? <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. Um, uh, not that it's the the acceptable score, the, the points total, but I think we're all we're all in that opinion. All of us on the panel that that we can get nine points from those three games for, for sure. <laughs> um, I actually think West Ham's the toughest of the three. Because West Ham have got um, an attacking line that is really potent. Now, Paqueta's back. Bowen's on fire at the moment. Um, Kudus, Mohamed Kudus is, is proving to be a terrific player. I think it's it's going to be a really difficult game. But we're at home. And at home, we know anything's possible. But, uh, you know, we owe Chelsea one. We owe them at Stamford Bridge. We don't get far, we, nowhere near enough wins at that place. And we owe, we owe them a big win. Um, on on Monday, so I'm looking forward to that one for sure. Um, I've, I've got a couple more questions. I'm not going to go through them to that because we'll probably be in, a, in another hour. But um, we'll, we'll stick with those questions for next week. Um, but Daz, is there any, one or two you want to quick fire before we wrap up? In the yes, chat? let's do kind of quick quick fire. But uh, thanks to Lorraine and everyone else who who has subscribed tonight. Uh, great to see some new faces in the chat as well. Uh, one we didn't talk about. Uh, we touched on Pete as, as before we started the show, but. Dave brings this one. Dave Bowman says about Zinchenko. Uh, this talk today of that of us being in the mix for him. I, I don't like the fee of uh, forty five million being quoted, but uh, would would anyone uh, take him to, to Newcastle? He's about twenty seven. No. Nah. Nah, it's an all round then. So let's go move on. Um, <laughs> right, uh, this, this one from Alan Thompson, lads. Question Billy, uh, Billy Villa fan on the 12th Man podcast says, Ollie Watkins is better than Isaac. Does the panel agree? Yes or no? And why? Who's going to agree with that? 
<laughs> I think for me, it's a preference to, it's preference thing. For me, I'll put it in that sense. And the preference is Isaac all day long. I wouldn't change it for no one. You can stay fit, fit for a whole season. You can only imagine. Look how much goals he's on already. And he's been out, what, twice already. So, now nah, for me, my preference will be Isaac. I, th- I think I think Specs makes a really good point because if you have a fully fit Isaac for a whole season, no injuries, he scores more than what Watkins has done this season, in my opinion. Yeah. I think oh, Isaac is the fast. Isaac is the whole Isaac is the whole package. Um, Isaac can do what Watkins can do. Watkins can't do what Isaac can do, in my opinion. I think Isaac's a very very good footballer. I think he can he can run with the ball. He's a goal scorer. Um, you know, he, 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 he links up with a lot of players, particularly like so we've obviously taught in our, our midfielders. He's a bit of a you know fox in the box. He saw the goal against Wolves, you know, getting in the right areas to get that first goal. Um, he's sharp, he's quick, he, you know, he's a, he's worth a lot of money, and that's why Newcastle paid the big the big bucks from. But you know, if you can keep him fit, you know, that's that's all you just need to do because he's one and two in the Premier League. He's like that. You, you don't get many strikers that are one and two. Um, probably Harry Kane and. Well, when Harry Kane was in the Premier League, he's probably the only exception really to the rules. So, yeah, um, and well, and Harland obviously forgot about forgot about him. So he's my he's all right, isn't he? But um, yeah, he's I'll like give you guys. Package. I'll give you guys as well with these sack on me. This complete package for me. In stays injury free, right? Play for against minimum. I think this guy can get twenty five goals minimum next season if he stays fit. No question about that. Lots of play up front. You can see what he can do. He can play wide as well. So he's got a lot. The guy's got a lot, and um, no may continue because I think he's going to be um, he's he's going to be world class. Give a couple more years, be world class. Yeah. Let's move on, lads. Let's move on with the next question. And uh, this is an interesting one from Lee G. Uh, um, and he asked the question: question for the lads. Pick uh, uh, pick on pick a player by the ability and not. Uh, and not because of circumstances. Would you rather have in your side Jonas Gutierrez or um, ASM? It's a tough question. Mm. Good question. Good, good question. Go on, go on, Specs. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, know. No, no, no. I don't think it's a tough question. I'm going to put him ASM all day long. You know, he's hot and cold at times. I think even at times this season when we're struggling, there's moments we've missed that where he can make the opposition think twice and scare them when he's on it. Jonas, though, he's a legend, bro. Let's not ever get it twisted, man. Some memories of him get me during some relegation battles as well. Let's not forget, never can forget Jonas. We love him. You get me? But um, if I had a choice, I'm going to have ASM, man. And just a nice link in there while you think think your answers is he's uh, he's coming to Newcastle. Yes. He's coming to Newcastle to talk to uh, Pete Graves on the 9th of May. Uh, so uh, go check that out uh, via the gala events and tickets from 35 quid as well. So uh, that's a nice link. In. Anyone else, any thoughts on who you'd pick? ASM or Jonas Gutierrez? Spider Man. I'd go ASM. Just, I just think he. Yes, he is. Yes, he was very hot and cold. I just think when I look at the moments, particularly when before the takeover, where it was basically ASM and Callum Wilson FC before, we, in terms of keeping us up in the division. Let's be honest, and we we did miss him when he wasn't when he wasn't fit. So Gutierrez gave us some good moments, and you know I I, 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 I don't get emotional with football in terms of like physically getting crying, but. The closest I've ever got was Gutierrez scoring against West Ham on the final day. I just think if someone can come back from cancer and score a goal that meant that meant so much, even though he wasn't getting a contract, which again it's another it's another reason to yeah. uh, dislike Mike, Mike Ashley and the ownership at that time. Um, yeah, that's probably the closest. But yeah, ASM just for pure talent. I think he's one. If if he if he if he had if he had the assists and goal scoring record that Anthony Gordon has for Newcastle right now. He wouldn't be at Newcastle in that respect. He wouldn't be playing in Saudi. He'd be playing for again the, the top, top, top clubs. Let's be honest. Um, that's a tricky one for me as well. I, I just I can't put a thing on it, man. But if I was forced into a position, a position, I have to go with just ASM for me because yes, he has got a final product. He has, he has got an end product, but skillful wise, 
is fantastic. You know, he just makes people second guessing that as well. You know what he can do. And, you know, he scores some cracking goals as well um, since his time with us. But join us, loving the bits as well. Give us some great moments as well with his um, run of the ball as well, dribbles and that. But for me, just ASM for me. I wouldn't even say just. It's ASM, man, for me, period. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you say, Specky, I'll go ASM then. Period. <laughs> you know, you know just, to, just to add into that, I mean... Like I love Jonas, and yeah, he did fantastic things for the for the club. And I, I hate the way I hate the way his career ended at Newcastle. Um, but taking off the rose tinted glasses, like uh, Jonas's numbers for Newcastle for the winger were awful. Like he he didn't score enough goals, he didn't assist enough goals. Really good player, but he he didn't he didn't have those numbers. Now I know ASM had a similar problem, and I agree with Johnny. ASM wouldn't have played for Newcastle if he could have got those numbers. Um, but yeah, in terms of in terms of how he how ASM carries us at certain times in games, like he he was literally a one man show or two man show, as as Johnny said with uh, Callum Wilson as well. So for me, it was quite an easy one. Like I, I'd I'd definitely pick um, ASM. Oh, hey, ASM fanboy. If I speak, <laughs> I'm in big trouble. He's always sitting on the fence with these tricky questions. Uh, uh, hey, I'm not Keith. I'm not Keith. <laughs> and we may get that tomorrow night. We'll see. But uh, no, look, of course, ASM all day, all day, every day. Um, he's a maverick, uh, he's an entertainer. He didn't get the numbers, as you boys have said, and absolutely that's why he's left the club. But, um, he is a difference maker. And even when he doesn't get the goals or assists, he creates moments in which we score goals. So he might play the pass before the assist that creates the goal. And if you go back to his last season at Newcastle United, and there was a really good rate, um, like kind of a reel of, of, of opportunities, almost a, um, a reel of opportunities where a ASM should have got assists, but the player missed the chance and it was a good, easy chance. Um, and if it had had that, it have racked up another 10, 12, 15 goal contributions in that season. Um, so it is very much fine margins, but what you will get is him coming on and making a difference for Newcastle United. Um, and he is capable of the impossible. And we just go back to the, the volley at Molyneux last season, which was just an outrageous volley. That, that ended up getting us a point out of nothing when we probably didn't deserve it. Yep. Beautiful. Be the same. I'll go with Sam as well uh, on, on this one. Uh, do we want to go for more questions or have we ran out of time? I have a, uh, one or two comments I want to bring in, but uh, uh, I think we should probably think about wrapping up. Uh, Andrew DB, so that's a good one here. Uh, is this is the best uh, um, round of accents he's heard for a long time? Uh, some some uh, great collection there there here uh, on the show tonight. So uh, great to hear that as well. Uh, and yeah, you know what? I'll leave it there on 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 the the questions. This is some great questions we didn't get to, but uh, I'll leave it there. Um, we want to tell people what's happening uh, tomorrow as well, Pete. Let's tell people uh, about tomorrow's show. Yeah, so we're back. Away days, big match preview. Um, we've got Charlie uh, from the Blue Brothers um, podcast. And uh, we've got uh, Greasy Don, um, who people will know from the 12th Man and various other channels, um, talking all things Newcastle United and Chelsea. And we're going to get to why are Chelsea's the billion pound blue bottle jobs? Uh, we're we're going to ask them that question. Um uh, tomorrow night. So looking forward to that. Don't be late, eight o'clock um, on Loaded Mag NUFC. And uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing Keith sitting on the fence again. Uh, but we'll look forward no, to it. No, no. Two two in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait. Two two is the new one one for Keith. Uh, next year is three three. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we'll be back for a reaction show as well. Probably on Tuesday. I think uh, we, we, we've lined up that for a reaction show. So he's pushed all the way till Tuesday with the game on on Monday. Uh, also, then a quick shout out to our sponsors. A shout out to 
the radiatorshed.com and the fabulous radiators that Russ has going there. Mention Lord and Mac and you get a, a 20% discount as well. Tell him we sent uh, you his way. Um, and also shout out to H2O Bathroom Design Co. And the fabulous bathrooms that they have on offer. Go check out the showroom. Go check out the website. That that's uh, the advice there for the, the latest and greatest uh, that they have to offer. And also, then I suppose we give a shout out to ourselves because uh, we're across a range of platforms: YouTube, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, and Amazon Music, and across the socials on uh, Twitter, X, uh, TikTok, and Insta. And for business inquiries, contact us at Loaded Mag NUFC Info at gmail.com uh but i think we should allow the lads here as well to promote their channels uh, and thank them and thank them for coming on and, and joining us tonight so uh john let's start with you and we go across the, the board thank you very much for having us on tonight guys has been fantastic and um you can find us on john sinclair tv i'll do the match previews reviews breaking news real talk podcast as well where i get some um, enough people to come on as well and um also do like a collab show like a once a week with different set fan sets and um also doing match day vlogs as well so i'll be doing the match day vlog against man city that'll be my next vlog so i can't wait for doing it so please hit like and subscribe please thank you nice for joining everyone's channel is, is uh, hyperlinked as well in the 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 uh youtube description johnny where can we find you yeah all all over Newcastle fans TV, so we've got see Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, predominantly Instagram, TikTok, wherever. And um, you know, we're obviously pretty much every game. Um, Lee's at the game on some Monday night against Chelsea, he's at the women's game on Sunday against Stourbridge, and then it's obviously City in the Cup. Um, and then obviously, we'd, we'd do a little bit of everything. Um, we win charity games against Loaded Mark. We do a little bit of everything. Really. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's, that's, uh, Man, that's, 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 that's the lot, really, isn't it? That's all that's an offer. Lads, just let him do it. Let him do it. Because then, when, when, when March 29th comes around, then uh, <laughs> looking forward to it. <laughs> Specs, let's Again. go to you. And yeah. first. Sorry, Johnny, do you want to say something else? I was just, I was just going to say again, just look, if, if, you, if you're in a position to, obviously for the, for the charity, if you can in position to donate, then again, we greatly appreciate it. Um, that, that, that's, always, that's the main reason why uh, we're all, all doing it, ban- banner aside. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, Specs, let's go to you as well. And uh, for, for Specs, let's get Specs to 1K. He's not that far off at uh, 1K. So let's, if, if everyone, uh, as well as hit the like, go click and, and, and subscribe to Specs as well. Let's get him to 1K subs. Specs, tell us more. You put me on the spot, man. You know I'm a humble man. I just go with the flow. But I appreciate you like anyway. And everyone on the panel and all everyone in the comments, all the viewers and everyone that I appreciate. Um... Obviously, I'm the London Embracing Geordie, Geordie Dread TV. I do all the Newcastle watch alongs. I do football watch alongs in general. I just love football. And obviously, I collab with many other stations as well. But big up to Loaded Max. And just on a serious note, I think that's a beautiful, beautiful thing that you guys are doing with the charity match. Now, that's no joke. So, off air, I would like to donate or I do, but then direct to you direct or the link. But on a serious note, those kind of things coming from where I'm coming from in my hood is a lot of poverty where I'm from. That's normal. So those kind of things, I take it seriously. So big up to you guys for doing your charity work, man, because that means a lot to even see you guys doing that. But yeah, I'm Geordie Dread, all platforms, Twitter, social media, social media, Twitter, Instagram, and um, even Facebook. So yeah, so big up to you, to everyone in the panel. Cheers, Specs. Brilliant stuff. It's been a great show. Really enjoyed that. Uh, great chat all round. And um, yeah, I'm, I know that will get you boys on again to talk more talking to. See you out, Daz. Take his own fella. Right. For Johnny, when we smash you on the 29th of March, we'll say, How'd you like that? How you like that? <laughs>
Drink, drink it. Like we can tell me if you like that, like that.